Michael, how old are you? I'm 28 now. You're 28. How do you keep the faith in those tough years of like 18, 19? You know, now it looks obvious, you know, you're an overnight success. <laughs> but during those years, that must have been very challenging. Like, how do you make it through those times? Yeah. Um, so obviously it was like a, a tough period of time. And, you know, uh, you know, I'm going to be honest, like there were like a number of times where I, thought, I felt like I just wanted to like leave, right? Because things were like pretty bad and things were just very difficult. <laughs> um, but for like, you know, like some reason, I think it's because I, I generally don't like to be a quitter. I generally like to, you know, try and fight hard. So that's kind of why like I, I stuck around. And also, you know, just in terms of like um, blockchains overall, um, the reason I kind of got into um, blockchains to begin with is, in my opinion, when you're when you're like um, uh, working on blockchains, you're basically like you're betting against like government like irresponsibility. So you're betting against like government monetary policy where they're just debasing the currency. <laughs> you're betting against you know government fiscal policy where they're just spending a whole bunch of money to buy people's votes. And so blockchain is like the alternative kind of system to that because it's all based on voluntarism. It's based on building uh, like new applications that are kind of like separate from like government institutions where it's, it's the people that really control those applications. They're like peer-to-peer -peer applications, right? <laughs> and so for me, that's always been like the primary driver why I'm interested, have been interested in blockchain technology. So for me, I've kind of seen the adoption over time. And so I, I believe that, you know, blockchains are kind of like in a in a secular bull market where like even though there's like peaks and troughs in terms of like hypes and you know and and, and like bear markets etc the, tr the trend is clearly up and that's because the adoption is is occurring and i think a lot of people are kind of surprised to hear that in 2018 ethereum actually had more users than it had in 2017 even though the market capitalization was obviously lower in 2018 and that's because the adoption has been has kept increasing over time as the technology has improved and therefore, in the end, you know, blockchains are, become, are going to become much, much, much bigger than they are currently. And so that's also been a motivating factor that I think in the long term, this is a, te a real technology that's here to stay. And I definitely like want to be a part of it. So th that's also part of the motivation that kept me going in that I can kind of see in the long run how like, you know, blockchains can be used for everyday purposes. And in particular, you know, how Phantom could be used for everyday purposes. And that's the position where I, I want Phantom to be. So those were kind of like motivating factors that just uh, kept me going. Um, so I didn't, you know, I, I, you know, I, I didn't leave in the end, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess ultimately this is about freedom and you probably saw, well, maybe if I don't get Phantom to work, then people won't have an alternative than their fiat currency that they were, you know, born with or living with in their country and all of the choices the government makes. And like you said, fiscal and monetary policy and I guess that'll give you that extra little bit of fight, won't it, in the morning <laughs> when you're thinking maybe this is something that could change the world. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, um, like cryptocurrencies, blockchains are kind of the antithesis of government control <laughs> because with government control, they have full control over, um, you know, the currency via central banking. You know, they can print the um the currency to infinity. And that's why there's kind of like this joker going around, but like, hey, guys, I identified this like, you know, scam coin, it's, you know, it, it, it could be like printed to infinity. There's only one node. No one has control over it except for that one node. Um, you know, it's government enforced. Oh, wait, that's like, you know, fiat currencies, right? <laughs> and and, and that's, that's a good way to describe it because the, 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 big, the, biggest, the, the, the biggest issue, the biggest political issue in my opinion, you know, it's not like climate change. It's not about, you know, like, you know, like civil rights or anything like that. What it is about is about money. It's about what what kind of money do you want to use? Do you want to, do you want to use money that's government enforced, that's controlled, you know, um, um, that's not controlled by individuals where you're forced to use that currency and it can be debased? I mean, currencies have been debased for thousands of years. You can go back to Roman times. You can go, go back to the Weimar Republic. You know, it, it's the same story. And simply by printing more currency, it doesn't create wealth. You know, what creates wealth is goods and services and fulfilling, you know, the needs of, you know, consumers. That, that's what it comes down to. There's no, there's no magic, magic wand where you can just print like a trillion dollars and therefore like everyone's like has a, a trillion dollars more in wealth. Like maybe on paper they do, but in terms of actual goods and services, they don't. And so for cryptocurrencies, you know, a lot of people make fun about how there's a thousand coins, 2000 coins, 
whatever. And, you know, there's a lot of like, maybe not high quality stuff out there. And that's fine. That's just a free market. You know, um, people will kind of gravitate, people will vote with their transactions as to what chains they want to use and what currency they want to use. And so people will naturally gravitate towards the money that's um, that, that has the most value in their mind. I mean, I think that's what's that, like says law is all about. And so that's really like a more free market, like voluntarist approach to, um, you know, to money, to, to, to people's interactions with one another.